There are so many different types of bleed builds possible for Elden Ring. But which setup is actually the best and most powerful? Using maths and comparisons today we will go over the actual most powerful bleed build. This build is the late game and evolved version of my samurai build for those that are following along. The samurai build I made is the most powerful bleed build for the early and mid game. So if you are starting a new playthrough definitely watch that one as well. In the late game, various early game bleed related Ashes of Wars and affinities start losing their value however, post Morgoth mostly, as their scaling with high stats is not that great. At that point you conveniently unlock the Giants of the Mountaintops area however, and you unlock the incredibly powerful Seppuku Ash of War. You can pick up Seppuku at the freezing lake exactly around here, you want to kill the invisible scarab that patrols the area, when you do so you will get the Ash of War, now this Ash of War is very boring to use. Because you need to keep buffing yourself every single time and do this with both of your weapons and ain't nobody got time for that right? The good news however is that it's so powerful it compensates for that because it adds a ton of bleed build up to your weapon and it adds also a bunch of AR to your weapon as well. This means that when you apply it to both your weapons you will just melt everything in your path. And that's when the real fun starts and let's be honest stabbing yourself has never looked this cool before. <laughs> So get Seppuku, duplicate it with a lost Ash of War and apply it to both your weapons. Now which weapons do you actually want to use to pair the Seppuku with? Is it a combination of twin blade weapons, curved swords, katanas or should we just ditch all of that? Spare us the headache and just use Rivers of Blood and spam L2 instead. There are a lot of options. Within blade builds, twin blades and curved swords are the most popular weapon classes due to their movesets and the fact that they both can hit multiple times within a second so you can easily proc bleed with them. As both have great movesets, the absolute best option is going to rather depend on the stats of the weapon. Thus, a weapon within these weapon classes that has an innate blood loss build up is going to be the best option because it will maximize the power that weapon has as you can then give it the occult affinity and thus make it possible to get both our damage and bleed build up through the same stat arcane the blood affinity is not bad as well but it's not optimal for the late game because it makes your highest scaling grade dexterity but you still need to invest points into arcane to increase the pace of blood loss build up but doing so will mean that you will not get as much of the other aspect of damage, namely raw damage in return for it, as its scaling is much lower through the bleed affinity. Occult solves that problem because you get 2 for the price of 1 essentially. And it also will result into you having the highest damage output and I will show you that in a second. The argument for running blood on your weapons is that it gives you extra base blood loss buildup. But this is irrelevant with the seppuku setup and you always want to use seppuku with the bleed build. So that means that with Occult's better blood loss buildup scaling in combination with the insane blood loss buildup that seppuku gives. This will make it so that the arcane in the occult setup will have a higher scaling and value not just for damage but for blood loss buildup as well. So in terms of overall values, not just base values, both your AR as well as the blood loss buildup is going to be higher with the occult seppuku setup. And many people do not realize that. Reaching the blood loss buildup cap is easy and you're going to always instantly proc bleed with occult weapons and have the higher damage output. But we just need to find a weapon with either of these weapon classes that actually has an innate blood loss buildup. And thankfully there is one curved sword in the game that actually has that. This is the scavenger's curved sword. For the twin blades there is one as well, this is Eleonora's pull blade, but it's a unique weapon meaning that it's pretty much the worst option as you can't give it seppuku and if you want to use it for its ash of war then rivers of blood is just going to be the better option for a bleed build. On the other hand the scavenger's curved sword is unironically one of the best non-legendary weapons in the game and I will go over the why in a second. The other popular curved sword that is often used in bleed builds is the bandit's curved sword using the blood affinity. Now if you compare these two and don't consider seppuku then the bandit's curved sword will have the higher blood loss build up while the scavenger's curved sword will have the higher AR. But as I said you will always want to use seppuku with the bleed build at any point 
for every fight, for every situation basically. And at that point there is no contest anymore. Scavengers with Occult is going to damage the Bandit Curved Swords in every way possible. Let's assume we reach the most optimal stats distributions for both of these weapons given their affinity. With 80 Arcane for Scavengers you will get 528 AR and 280 blood build up with Seppuku. Giving the same number of points that you can spend on the Bandit's blood build in this case you will get 436 AR and 220 blood build up. Even if you would intentionally gimp your raw damage output and go all the way in arcane with the bandit's blood setup, you still wouldn't get the higher blood loss build up compared to the occult build as you can see. It's the same versus the best twin blade dual setup which revolves around goldskin peeler with blood affinity as well. And not just that, the scavenger's curved sword will beat any bleed setup with the blood affinity in both AR and blood loss build up with an occult affinity. It will get even more shocking in a second. But before we continue, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is basically a huge online community with thousands of inspiring classes and you can learn any new skill here or deepen your knowledge on a lot of different subjects, hence the name. For example, I see people always ask me about how I edit my videos and if that's something that interests you and you'd like to learn more about that, then Skillshare got you covered and provides all kinds of classes for that. Not only that, they have classes on graphic design, photography, illustration and it's not just creative stuff, they also have business classes, finances classes self-improvement and the list goes on and on. Skillshare is a great place to invest in yourself and to grow your knowledge and acquire new skills and there is something for everyone basically no matter your skill level and I have great news because the first thousand people to use my link in the description or my personal code on the screen will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Back to the video, the reason why we see the scavenger with the occult affinity do so well is because scaled blood loss buildup is much higher for the scavenger's curved sword due to seppuku's additional blood loss insane buildup in combination with the higher arcane bleed scaling that you have on an occult weapon which results in an overall value that is much higher. What all of this boils down to is that the scavenger's curved sword is the definitive winner. You get the scavenger's curved sword in Mount Gelmir right here. You can loot it from the corpse near the ladder. Now ideally you would want to run two of these to power stands and get all the juicy damage and insane bleed procs. But this will require you to go to either NG plus or get someone to trade you one. That can be a problem if you don't know anyone. If you don't know anyone that can do that for you, then I would just suggest you to put a comment below this video, mention your platform and just ask if someone can give you one. The sword is a really easy pickup in the game, you don't have to farm it, you don't have to do any quests and there are always people giving away weapons in the Elden Ring community for free, so you can test your luck like that. Or you guys could help out each other. However, if you can't get anybody to give you one, don't get mad, because the next best thing to use is going to be one scavenger curved sword and one bandit curved sword. But don't infuse the bandit curved sword with blood affinity, infuse it with occult for all the reasons I just mentioned. This is going to be the second best option. And you might think the bandit curved sword has no innate bloodless buildup, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Infuse it with occult, it will still get a ton of blood loss just from seppuku itself. And this is going to be the second best option because you pretty much get all the benefits from wearing two scavengers curve sword. You'll even have a higher AR from the bandit's curve sword. You can do all of it in your own playthrough. You don't need NG plus or people trading you. But obviously at the expense of some extra bloodless buildup that you otherwise would have gotten. As the bandit's curve swords do not have innate blood scaling. And all the blood scaling you get in this case is from seppuku. But trust me it's more than enough and you will deal massive damage as well. The easiest way to get a bandit curve sword is by going to the Weeping Peninsula area to the Church of Pilmridge and farm the skeletons there. They drop the sword for you. For enemies that are immune to bleed, such as let's say just the final two bosses in the game, there's no problem whatsoever either. Because thankfully due to the occult affinity on our swords, we can fully invest our points into arcane, which makes it so that we scale both our damage as well as our blood loss build up at the same time. This makes it so that we have insane damage even without broken bleed and that erases any problems we otherwise would have with enemies immune to bleed. 
which is also another benefit for going with the occult affinity over the blood affinity by the way because we just get much more ar with occult as our primary scaling attribute is also our primary damage attribute now that we've finally decided on our weapons, it's time to talk about talismans. The staples in a bleed build are going to be Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prothesis. Lord of Blood's Exaltation will increase your attack power when you proc bleed and since it's so easy to proc bleed with this build, you just grow stronger pretty much free. It's a no brainer. For it, you have to go to the capital and go underground. You want to go to the Landal Catacombs in particular and go through the dungeon as shown basically. When you equip the talisman, it will raise your attack power with 20% every time for 20 seconds when you proc bleed. And every time you proc bleed, it will reset the timer again. Since it's really easy to proc bleed in 20 seconds, it's pretty much just going to stay active for every fight for the entire duration of the fight. It also stacks with all the other stuff that we pick up and are going to use, so that's great as well. Both the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prothesis will do the same thing essentially and increase your attack power with successive hits. You get these by completing the Millicent questline. Near the end of this questline you will have to choose and there was a time where you could get both due to a bug but it was patched. So if you can get someone to trade you the second one that you don't have then that's great. If not it doesn't really matter. In that case I would go for the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia since it has the higher percentages of attack power increases and replace the Millicent Prothesis with the Ritual Sword Talisman since you will in a lot of situations just be at full health when you're actually attacking and pretty much kill whatever you're fighting before before anything happens to you so you will most of the time just get all the benefits from this talisman and in all those cases you will get a plus 10 damage increase so it's definitely a good talisman a completely different option for this slot is using the dragon crest great shield talisman this is a really great defensive talisman and i recommend it to you if you feel like you get hit a lot because it will definitely reduce the damage you get significantly for the fourth talisman you want to get the claw talisman that you can actually get very early in the game in stormville the scavengers curved sword have a very fast and smooth jump attack that pretty much instantly applies four hits on your enemy so it's definitely something you want to use and with this talisman you get 15 percent extra damage just by jump attacking jump attacking is really good with the curved sword dual wield setup but to make sure that you get the most out of your jump attack don't instantly attack after you jump because versus many enemies it will make your hit swing over the enemy and thus you won't get all the damage in yeah. What you actually want to do, and this is the best way to approach the jump attack, is jump, wait a little bit till you have lost some height and then attack. This way you will make sure that you get all 4 hits in quickly and reliably. On the note of jump attacks and increasing your damage, it's time to talk about for gear the staples are going to be the white mask that drops from one of the nameless invaders in Molken Palace which you can go to after starting Varus questline. This mask is really good as it has the exact same effect as our Lord of Blood Exaltation Talisman. It increases your attack power every time you proc bleed for 20 seconds and it stacks with the other stuff that we use. For the chest piece you want to pick up the Raptor's Black Feathers in the Sage Cave in the Altus Plateau region. In this cave you will have to go through some hidden walls and proceed but ultimately you can pick up the chest piece in a chest. This chest piece works very well with the rest of the setup because it's going to increase the damage from your jump attacks even more with another 10% increase and thus is a really nice additional bonus. The problem with this chest and the head piece is that your defenses are going to be lacking and you are going to be very squishy but thankfully we can compensate for that. For the legs and gauntlets you want to pick up the bull goats gauntlets and greaves this will compensate for our squishiness for sure because these two pieces have the highest defensive stats in the game and therefore are also quite heavy but you can actually wear both of them with our points in endurance and also because the rest of our gear is really light let's be honest you wouldn't want to be seen wearing the set dead or alive but these two parts of the set are actually the good looking aspects of the set so you get all the benefits and none of the downsides doing this for the flask you'll want to get the thorny crack tier, it's the exact same principle as our rotten winged sword insignia talisman but this one actually raises our attack power with even higher percentages for every consecutive hit. You can get it from the putrid avatar near the minor air tree in the northeastern part of the consecrated snowfield area. The other tier depends on preference, you can use the opaline bubble tier for the extra defense since you will always be in melee range. Another really good option is the green burst crystal tier as attacking with your curved swords and power stancing with them will deplete your stamina rather fast and this crystal tier helps you out exactly with that because it will make you regenerate your stamina much faster and thus it provides a great solution to that problem. 
If you thought it couldn't get any better, well you were wrong. Because running this occult seppuku build is next to giving you the most damage output, also going to be the most stat efficient. You will reach your soft caps with less point investment compared to a blood affinity build. And for our setup you want to get 80 arcane, 40 vigor at least and put the rest into endurance for a level 125 build. This will give you enough sustain and survivability in terms of HP, gear and stamina but also soft cap you out on damage and blood loss build up so it's the best of both worlds. If you want to go to level 150 then I would put the additional points into vigor and get extra fate to open up dragon incantations as you are deeply invested into arcane so using the dragon communion seal is going to be extremely powerful and it will also open up using incantations like golden vow and flame grant me strength which you can use to buff yourself and give you even more damage output if you care about it. I always cap my builds at level 125 because an actually powerful and good build will already be very OP at level 125. This is also a good takeaway if you watch content where people showcase builds and they are like level 200 or higher and are attacking random mobs or so. Obviously it's just low quality content, you can't take it seriously. The higher you go in stats, the less it will matter what you're actually doing because you start getting the power from your build from an abundance in levels and not because of the actual composition of the build so that's why i always cap the builds at level 125 to really show you that the build is actually op With this setup you are going to completely destroy every single boss in the game no matter how powerful they are you will proc bleed instantly all your talismans flask gear and other damage modifiers will stack with each other resulting in massive damage increases for a already incredibly powerful seppuku occult bleed build it does not matter whether your enemy is immune to bleed as well because due to our setup you will still deal massive damage to them and if you can proc bleed on the enemy then it's going to be even easier because you will just melt them within seconds Finally, we also have good defenses so we can sustain battles while we destroy everything in our path. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell thing as well so you are the first to get notified and leave your thoughts in the comments.